Available to MSNBC. The Savage Nation, next on MSNBC. It means that there's a lot of people who, who believe in me. Thank you, my friend. I'll be right back on The Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. I'm tired of all those ads. <laughs> I'm listening to my show on the Reno station on the way home. Well, thank God somebody's not insane in this city. Right on. He's probably give me a ticket. I'm sorry, officer. Got you. Look what I have. Oh, I don't believe it. Get this Look woman on tape. I, I don't I, believe it. I love you, Michael. Stop the traffic. I'm signing that book <laughs> in the traffic. Can we make a left here, Lee? Yes. <laughs> Savage wins. Could you believe that? Look, we got the lights behind us. Get that, man. Look at this. It's like we're getting a ticket, but instead she's getting a signed book. I love this. Okay, I'll pull over, officer. I'm sorry. Can I sign my book for you? <laughs> Isn't this great? I love it. I got to get her name. I, I give up. You don't, you don't understand. I'm, I'm kind of one of those... One of those cropped haired women, but but I still love you. I'm afraid of you. I ain't gonna say nothing that you don't like. This is unbelievable. She's been waiting this for this the whole day. Yeah, all day. I said, he's coming tonight. Yeah. I was looking for you. I knew I'd find you. you know, this, this is the biggest thrill of the night. When I saw those lights, I said, it's either good or bad. <laughs> oh, it's good. If you live with a woman, I need your help. Oh, you got to be on my side. I know. I told her. I said, I'll be on your side. I don't know what they're got, after me for. I'm not anti-gay. What do they want I from me? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I am on your side. I'll be looking hey, man. to you. Hey, I love it. Thanks, much. guys. Thank I appreciate you. it. We love you. I love this. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, and psychological nudity. Your discretion is advised. You're watching MSNBC. Now, best-selling author and one of America's most popular radio personalities, Michael Savage on The Savage Nation. Quite an opening. Unbelievable. I loved it. I'll tell you more about the red Cadillac a little later. And the happenstance. It was not created. So here's the dragon. If you pinch me, do I not scream? I'm Michael Savage. Welcome to my premiere show. I got to tell you something. When I woke up this morning, I felt as though I was going into surgery. You know, cardiac surgery would be easier than this. It reminds me of my first radio show. Believe me, I had many careers before I went into radio, all successful, incidentally, except the career I wanted from which I was blocked because of affirmative action. But we won't go into that. I'm doing quite well. Thank you. So I went on to my first radio show eight years ago, filled in for a liberal guy, didn't know what I was getting into. I go on the air. I'm on the air five hours. People are hating me, cursing me. I drive home. I'm looking in my rearview mirror the entire way home. I'm shaken. I get home and I say, I'm never going to do a radio show again. I don't need that much hatred. Well, eight years later, I'm in the top five of the radio business. Let's hope eight years from now, God willing, uh, the same story will be told about television. The big stories to me this week are very clear. We had President Bush give a speech the other night that was rather tepid, to be honest with you. Rather tepid. I don't know why there's no emotion. I don't know why there's no passion. We're about to go to war. Surely there must be a compelling case made. I'm going to make that case tonight. And I have a question for you. I want you to watch some footage that we're going to run initially for you right now. This footage has been available. It shows you that we have a Hitler in the Middle East. The man has committed atrocities like this, and he's never been brought to trial. Yes, we need regime change. But why do I, Michael Savage, have to be the one to show this footage when it's been readily available for all of these years? Could someone explain to me whether you think this is too much to show? on television? Is it appropriate to show this on television? The phone number here is 1-888-MSNBC-USA. I'm going to show that footage over and over again today because to me it answers why we fight. And I think that President Bush's advisors should have used this footage the other night when the whole world was watching. Do you agree with me? Do you think that President Bush should have shown that footage when he gave his speech? I'd like your opinion here on the Savage Nation. Also this week, we had an amazing piece of propaganda done by Dan Rather. Why do I call it propaganda? Because I lay down in my bed and I watched it. Shut the door, close the lights, and I watched Dan perform with Saddam Hussein. And after five minutes, Saddam started to look like a reasonable guy. 
After 10 minutes, I like Saddam Hussein. After 15 minutes, I thought he was nicer than George Bush. Was that propaganda in your opinion? Or was that journalism? Now, the answer to the question is simple. I understand that Dan had a tough job. I understand the dangers involved. I understand the delicate line he had to walk to get the interview. But, you know, after the interview with Saddam, Dan Rather could have run the footage that I ran for you, that I will run for you again. Put the man in context. It is as though we're on the brink of invading Normandy. And FDR is trying to make a case for invading Normandy and taking down Adolf Hitler. It's as though he has the footage of the Auschwitz death camps and he chooses not to show it for political correctness. Why shouldn't he have shown those death camp videos? At that time, of course, there were no videos on Pathé News and all the movie theaters around the country. Well, the answer is, I believe this footage is critical to the war effort, and I believe we must see it more rather than less. Topic number three or four, whatever it may be, on the Savage Nation. We had a huge victory today. President Bush did. He captured the mastermind of 911. Number three in Al-Qaeda is captured. Now, for months now, the Democrats have been screaming, ma, 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 you're not getting Al-Qaeda. Why isn't he going after Al-Qaeda? So he goes after Al-Qaeda, and with the help of the CIA and Pakistani intelligence, probably 90% the CIA, they capture this guy, the mastermind of 911. This should have been the news all week. Give the president some credit where credit is due, for God's sakes. Topic number four in the Savage Nation today, and again, I invite you to call on any of these topics at 1-888-MSNBC-USA on the first Savage television program. And this is a tragic story, and I want you to hear the whole picture before you judge me. A few weeks ago, a 14-year-old girl was smuggled into America from Mexico. She was smuggled into America from Mexico to receive an organ transplant. And before you judge me, I want to tell you something. I pray to God that Jessica Centillion is in heaven where she belongs. She was mutilated by Duke University, in my humble opinion. And I pray for her family, because I know what they're going through. They lost a beautiful angel. But that's not the question. The question to me is why was an illegal alien put at the head of the list for an organ transplant? Do you think it's fair that an illegal alien is put ahead of, the, ahead of Americans who may be waiting weeks or months for an organ transplant? I don't. And I want your opinion. The phone number here, 1-888-MSNBC-USA. Let's take some callers when they are available. Also, I'm going to be talking about a phenomenon in America. Other than uh, the phenomenon called the Savage Nation, I have a book called The Savage Nation. It's out for less than two months. It's been number one on the New York Times bestseller list for almost, what, four or five weeks in a row? How did that happen? Am I the only guy in America who says, saving America from the liberal assault on our borders, language, and culture? It can't be. Not if four to five hundred thousand people have gone out and bought this book. I have touched on a raw nerve that has been buried and suppressed in this country. What, am I the bad guy for saying I love America? I'm the bad guy for, for saying that I'm a nationalist? I don't think so. Beth in Michigan, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's your opinion, please? Hi, Mr. Savage. Thanks so much for taking my call. You're welcome. What's on your mind? Uh, well, my question is, since Saddam Hussein has gassed the Kurds in the past, how possible is it that he would do this again in an upcoming conflict involving our American GIs? Well, if he's done it in the past, why wouldn't he do it again? But that exactly. isn't the main issue, Beth. Mm -hmm. The issue to me is why has he not been tried for this atrocity against humanity? Mm -hmm. He killed, what, 30,000, 100,000? Nobody knows. Did you see those bloated bodies? Did you see the children? Yeah. Why doesn't the entire left-wing establishment which cares so much about children talk about the dead Kurdish children the dead Iraqi children I look at that footage I want to throw up it makes me sick I want to cry but I know why we fight I want America to know why we fight the man is a Hitler he shouldn't have been shown in a nice suit from London Savile Row with Dan Rather this is the footage it should have been run Beth don't you agree yes thank you for calling thank you so much John San Diego welcome to the Savage Nation hey Michael yes Hey, where was, my, where was George Bush's fire in his belly? We're taking on a bunch of Islamofascists out to kill you, out to kill me, even out to kill Martin Sheen. That's right. We face Islamofascism, which is a remnant of the great fabric of Islam. And the fact of the matter is we need somebody to get up there and explain who our enemy is and why they want to take us down and how they're out to destroy our civilization. I don't want to hear anymore it's about the fact that we have bad foreign policy. We were attacked, not them. 
and I need somebody to explain it to the American people. And I hope that more people in the media are encouraged in order to do what I'm doing here today. Chris in Virginia, welcome to the Savage Nation. Chris, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? How are you, Michael? Good. Good. Hey, do you think, uh, do you think Dan Rather was over the top in interviewing Saddam? Over the top? I, I yeah, do you question. think he, I mean, don't you think it was a bad move? Don't you think it was Well, my uh, position is simple. He should have run footage such as the footage I am showing today after the interview to say, this is what the man has done. We have to put that interview in context. You have to show the man's victims in order to know who the man is. Don't you agree with me? I do. I do. It would be, be the same thing if he interviewed Hitler 50 years ago. That's so. right. In other words, let's say uh, one of the newsmen of that time sat down with Adolf Hitler and Hitler was wearing a nice suit created by Boss or whoever created suits for the uh, SS at that time. Would you have said, gee, he's a nice guy, he's a vegetarian, he doesn't eat animals, he doesn't drink liquor, he's my kind of guy, he's a good liberal. But you got to show the context of the man, don't you? Thank you. More of your calls when we come back right here on the Savage Nation, the phone number to get on the premier show on these and other topics, including the Hollywood Idiot of the Week. 1-888-MSNBC-USA right here on the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. All right, welcome back to the Savage Nation. Many topics, the uh, gassing video, Kurds gassed, the capture of Muhammad, uh, the Dan Rather interview. Uh, we have yet to talk about what is sedition, which is what I want to talk about. There's a big debate going on in America about uh, how far can one protest before it becomes sedition. Now, I am a man who believes in the First Amendment just about absolutely, except when it comes to uh, promoting violence. However, there is a Sedition Act on the books, and I will read you a portion of it if you don't mind. Uh, when at war, to willfully utter print right or publish any disloyal, profane, scurrilous, or abusive language about the former government of the United States, or the Constitution of the U.S., or the military or naval force of the U.S., whoever by word or act shall be punished by a fine of not more than $10,000, or imprisonment for not more than 20 years of both. Now, that was from 1918. It says when we are at war, we are not at war. And that is why, truthfully, I believe Mr. Bush should go before Congress to ask for a vote an act of war being declared. Then we have the Sedition Act in place. Then we can stop some of these maniacs who are encouraging our enemies, weakening our troops' resolve, and confusing the American people. What do you think about that? 1-888-MSNBC-USA is the phone number for all of you savages and savagettes to call. 1-888-MSNBC-USA. Uh, Mim on Long Island, welcome to the Savage Nation topic, please. Hello? Hi. Hi. What's on your mind? Yes, I just wanted to agree, tell you that I agree with you as far as what you were saying about President Bush, that when they did the capture of Mohammed, yeah. that um, not one of the Democrats even spoke up about it. In fact, I was home on a Saturday, last Saturday, and I purposely turned on Channel 2, 4, and 7, and not one of them... Not one word. Not one word, except for the cable stations had it on. But, Mim, here's the point. The Democrats have been harping, give the inspectors a chance. Why doesn't he go after you know, Al-Qaeda? Yeah, well, but first you know of all, what? the inspectors are a bunch of foreign spies, 90% of them, working for you Saddam. Got that right, that, that, and number two, he captures the top dog who, who planned 911, and it's like it never happened. But it seems to me that the, the, the Democrats, they're only, they're only interested in their political gain, okay? Thank you. And they Thank you very much for calling, Mim. I agree with you. I want to see some celebrity protest video. I have no idea why the Hollywood idiots seem to think that it's their obligation to put down America to put down our troops. I have no idea why. I can't understand what's happened to this country. In one generation, we've gone from Rosie the Riveter to Rosie O'Dumbell. In World War II, we had Hollywood producing Why We Fight by the great Frank Capra. Now we have Why We Should Lift Our Skirts and Run by this bunch of Hollywood morons. Can someone explain to me what's going on? Because I don't like it, frankly. Warren in Las Vegas, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's your topic? Yes, Michael, I just want to say uh, congratulations on your new show. It's Thank you. It's like, it's like brain surgery. It's a lot of fun. Terrific. I'm a long-time uh, listener to your radio program. 
I've got a question for you. Uh, you mentioned the uh, going to Congress to declare an act of war yes. that our president should do. In light of his tepid press conference this week, um, he made a comment that this is my government, yeah. and I think it should have been our government. Yes. Without well, that was a slip of the tongue. I pointed it out on my radio show. He said, uh, my government uh, this, and I believe there's a case for war. I would have liked to hear that I know there's a case for war, and it's our government or, our, or your administration. I was a little worried about that one, Warren, but I stick to my guns. Yes, I believe Saddam is pure evil, and yes, I believe he needs to be removed, and yes, I've shown the footage which shows he's a mass murderer, but the president needs to be more impassioned. Do you agree with that, Warren? Absolutely. All right, well, then we agree on that. I thank you for calling. Again, if anyone wants to comment on this or any of the other topics that I have raised, 1-888-MSNBC-USA. Let's go to the President uh, of the United States, and I want you to judge if you think this is a case for war or not. Listen carefully, will you please? I think the threat is real. And so do a lot of other people in my government. And since... I believe the threat is real, and since my most important job is to protect the security of the American people, that's precisely what we'll do. Well, Mr. Bush, I know the threat is real, and I back you 100%, Mr. Bush, but I think you need to tell the American people that you know the threat is real. And for God's sakes, please ask Karl Rove to run some of this footage at the next press conference, and then let, and then let some of these left-wing dumbos in the press corps uh, sound off against the war with all of their trepidation. They ask them, don't they think it's time to bring this man to justice and give the Iraqi people a chance at life? I don't understand why this footage has been hidden, but I'm going to show it continuously until finally the dam bursts on this unbelievable cover-up. Stephen in New York, welcome to the Savage Nation topic, please. Stephen, you're on the Savage Nation topic, please. Uh, hi, Michael. I've been listening to you for years, and it's, uh, I'm really glad I'm on your first show here. All right. How do I look, Steve? You like my makeup? You, you look terrific. The, the, the jacket looks like vinyl, but I'm sure it's leather. Nah, don't you dare <laughs> say that. And inside it, I have real fur. Um, uh, let me, uh, for, first of all, I really can't wait till you take on these guys from uh, Fairness and Accuracy and Report. No, no, don't even mention them. I don't refer to any of the people who are, who are slandering me. They okay. are irrelevant. Okay, I want to ask you, my, my girlfriend is from Mexico, one of the places you call a third world nation. Who Thanks for the call. I appreciate it very much. Have a nice day. Okay, we had a nice setup call there. The phone number again, one eight 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 msnbc usa is the phone number. Again, I want to ask you a few questions about the news of the day. Let us go back to the president's press conference again. Do you want some fire in the belly? Do you think the president ought to have a little more passion, yes or no? Or do you think it's fine to him, for him to be so tepid? I'd, I'd really like to know that. Number two, the Dan Rather interview. Let's not go over that so fast. The man did a propaganda piece. Or do you think I'm being too harsh on Dan Rather? Also, the issue of sedition. Do you think the president should go for an act of war before Congress? I do. On these or other topics, one eight 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 msnbc usa Natalie, Minneapolis. What's Hi. on your mind? Thanks for calling the Savage Nation. Hi, Michael. Thank you. I just wanted to bring up a brief story. I do agree that footage needs to be shown of the atrocities that Saddam is committing. Yes. And I will give you a short story. It's an actor, Scott Glenn, I believe is his name. And he's the one who played Jack Crawford, Silence of the Lambs, as a profiler. He met up with John Douglas, who is an okay, FBI hold it. profiler. Okay, Natalie, this is too lengthy. Give me the okay. main point, the primary okay, point the of point your call. Okay, the point is people don't fundamentally understand what humans are capable of, the kind of evil they are capable of. That's right. You know why the they don't, Natalie? Because they've been raised in a politically corrected school system. They've been raised in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. And unfortunately, we don't live in an ideal world. We live in a vicious world. Just go and watch animals in the wild, and you'll know, you'll know the real world that we live in. And I have no idea why the liberals continue to live in this dreamland after 911. Their own fellow citizens went up and smoked, but that doesn't seem to bother them. They're concerned, the instead about, they're concerned instead about the enemy. People need the visuals, though. 
Well, what do you think about this visual that I'm showing today? Is it too much? Is it over the top? Uh, actually, I think you could go further. People really need things over-exaggerated to get the point across. Yeah, well, I wish we can get some of the footage from the torture chambers in Iraq. I don't think that's available. Thanks <laughs> no, for I calling. Don't. Todd, in Idaho, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's your call, your call about, please? Michael, this footage is great. You need to show this at every chance you can get, but I don't understand why you can't show the 9-11 footage. We need to see that every day. You want to hear something? I tried to get that footage, to be honest with you. Not just the plane smashing into the buildings, Todd, because I've talked about this on the radio show for a year and a half. Yeah. I wanted to see the footage of the American citizens who jumped out of the window because they were burning to death. I'm with you. I wanted to see the footage of the Americans as they hit the floor and were smashed like a watermelon on the ground. We're behind not, you, Michael. Not for Keep effect, going. Todd, but I think the American people need to understand the horror and the terror, and I don't know why we are being kept from it. Do you, Todd? No, but the liberals want us to forget 9-11. I don't, I don't know the reason. There's a gigantic conspiracy to keep us in a sort of pacified, idealized, infantilized state, Todd. They want and I don't believe that. I think reality is a great, great thing. And I think that psychological nudity is a great, great thing. And that's why I say, uh, uh, Todd, as long as I can have access to footage such as this, I will be showing footage such as this. Again, these are some of the topics that are bothering me this week on the Savage Nation. They're not the only topics by any means. I would like to talk about affirmative action and how white males specifically are being targeted by affirmative action. You know, a new poll just came out, a fake poll, of course, by the Associated Press, which says, oh, 50% of the American people support affirmative action. Why don't you ask the people who have been targeted by affirmative action what they think about it? Of course I'd be for affirmative action if I was given heads up and I didn't deserve it. Why don't you ask the people who have been targeted, in, and that would be, of course, the white males. They're the only ones who are, of course, affected by affirmative action. If you want to talk about affirmative action, hey, go ahead. one 888 USA is the phone number. Coming up next, though, when I come back, are the Hollywood idiots, specifically the Hollywood idiot of the week. We have a winner. That's right. Stay tuned to find out who I think, Michael Savage, thinks, is the winner, the biggest one the major domo of Hollywood idiocy when I come back right here on the Savage Nation. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Again, the phone number here, one 888 usa if you want to get on the premier show. We're going to go to the Hollywood idiot of the week. And that's, of course, one man's opinion. Now, I want to preface this by telling you I love movies I watch them all the time I have watched movies since I'm a little kid however I think it's greatly hypocritical for these Hollywood idiots who have built their careers on guns on knives on blood on fists on beating people to death and then to march out oh I'm a pacifist I'm against war it's absurd and the winner of the Hollywood idiot of the week for me this week is none other than Marty Scorsese now why do I say that well, look at the opening to Casino. I don't know the man, but look at the opening to this, to this Casino. You got Raging Bull. You got uh, Raging Bull number two. It's all about murder, blood, guts, great entertainment. But how can a man who builds his career on such violent imagery claim that he is into peace? I don't understand the connection, do you? So there is an example of the hypocrisy coming out of Hollywood. But many of the others who built their careers, to be honest with you, on beating, on punching, on shooting, on kicking people to death in bars, the next thing they're over there in uh, Saddam land marching around in their peaceniks. It's absurd. I don't buy it. Remember Taxi Driver? Blood all over the ground? Forget about it. I don't buy any of it. All right, let's go to the callers on these or any of the other topics, including affirmative action, at 1-888-MSNBC-USA. Let's go to Virginia Cole. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Hey, how you doing? What's I've never up? heard anybody that had so many opinions I agree with. I just wanted to ask you what you think about if uh, Saddam is allowed to stay in power, do you think that we'll have a bigger problem with his sons once he steps down and lets them take over? Well, the man is a mass murderer. He must be brought to justice. That's the whole point of today's show. Did you see the atrocity footage that I've been showing you? I didn't make that vo footage. It's been readily available on the world market. The question is, why has the media buried this footage? Don't you think that should be shown? This isn't, well, you're, I'll, I'll answer your question the same way. 
If he did it once, why wouldn't he do it twice? Oh, I agree. I think he's going to do so much worse than that if we allow him to stay. Yeah, and the liberals keep saying, oh, he hasn't been shown to have weapons of mass destruction. Well, I guess Cincinnati needs to go up and smoke for them to say, oh, I guess he has weapons of mass destruction. And then they'll probably say, well, we can't prove he did it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, They're I always do. I looking for an excuse. They're always looking for an excuse to give stupidity a chance. Thank you for yep. the call. Vern, in California, you're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Thanks, Michael. Could you give um, the new uh, viewers a little background on what savage means and uh, what it means to want a more savage nation? What it means to want to... Oh, you mean in my book, how I say in the, in the uh, book, The Savage right, Nation? Right, in the original... Uh, yeah, well, the original meaning is quite simple. Right. That uh, This is the most compassionate nation the world has ever seen. And I think we're suffering from compassion overload. And I want to say that only a more savage nation can survive. Not a more passive nation, Vern. Do you agree with that or disagree? 100%. I've been listening since 94. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Vern. Well, let me go into that for a minute because there's some, probably some very good Democrats out there listening to the show and thinking that I'm way off the mark. There was a great book written by a man who will remain unnamed for a moment called Why England Slept. And it was a case for war. It was a case for building up the military. It was a case for keeping the military strong. And that book was written by John F. Kennedy when he was a student at Harvard University. Kennedy studied England in the 1930s when you had voices like that being said by the liberals of today, the Hillary Clintons, the Charles Schumers, the Barbara Boxers, the entire left-wing cabal, which says, oh, let's take, first they were taking the military apart for a good number of years. Today, of course, they're pretending they're not. The English took down their navy. The English took down their military. The English were not prepared for Hitler. And by the way, there's a great comparison with what Iraq is doing and what the Germans were doing. After the League of Nations voted and said that, German could not remilitarize. They were only allowed a certain amount of this, a certain amount of that. Well, suddenly uh, Hitler started to create weapons he wasn't allowed to have. Just as Saddam is creating weapons he's not allowed to have according to UN resolutions. Must we let the man rearm to the point where he finally does attack America overtly? Overtly and militantly for the liberals to finally say, now I understand why we fight. Now I understand why President Bush went in to disarm him in advance. What is wrong with the logic of a preemptive strike? Let me put it in another way. You own a house. You own a house. You have a yard. You see bad people out there behind your yard. You people, people cruising by and they're looking at your house. Do you wait, them, wait for them to come through your door before you call the police? Or do you call the police and say there are suspicious looking people lurking around my house? Don't you understand what this is all about? That would be a preemptive call to the police. That's the story in a nutshell. David in Oklahoma, what's your topic? Please welcome to the Savage Nation. David, I can't hear you. Please, yeah. what's your topic? Go oh, ahead. I love your show, Mike. I don't blame um, you. I would love it, too, if I was home watching it. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to talk about the repetitiveness of Bush's speeches. All he wants to do is keep drawing lines in the sand and says he's got this coin phrase, um, Saddam must dis disarm or we will lead a coalition to disarm him. And that's all he has to say. David, we need more passion, we need more fire in the belly, we need a greater case as to why we fight. I'm sorry, but I think the president is being too, mo too modest. And I think he's being advised to look modest because the liberals would jump all over him if he looked impassioned about going to war. They'd call him a warmonger. So I understand the position he's in. It's, he's almost in a no-win situation. And that's why we in the media who see the truth must not wait any longer. And I'm saying we need to show this footage. We need to show the footage to the world and say, do you want a man who committed these kinds of atrocities to get away with it? I don't understand it. I truly don't understand it. I'm not the only person on earth who sees this. Uh, and so I say, let this be an opening to the rest of you out in the media watching this. When I come back, I'll take your calls at 1-888-MSNBC-USA. I think the parallels are very great to the eve of World War II. In case you don't know it, we're already in World War III. We have been attacked. Don't you understand that? Do you people get it yet? Do you remember what happened on 911? Must it be a bigger bomb and a bigger destruction for you to finally understand that we've got to stand up to the leader of the Islamo-fascist world? Yes, that's what I'm calling it. There's a reason for it. And I'll tell you what that reason is. We are fighting fascism. We're not fighting Islam. You understand it?
You will when I come back here on the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. All right, you're back with Michael Savage in the premiere show on MSNBC. You know, I have a big, successful radio show. It's about number four or five in the country, six million listeners a week. And television is a new medium. But not that I'm intimidated by it, but the issue is I'm using video. And I'm going to go back to this video piece over and over again. Because as far as I'm concerned, most Americans, even those who back the president, don't even know why. And those who oppose the president don't even know why. I have to show you the shocking footage again. This was not done by George W. Bush, as the liberals would have you believe. The fact of the matter is, it was done by the man that George Bush wants to take out of office and bring to justice and give the Iraqi people a chance. Don't you understand who we are dealing with? I wish to God you did. The other topics as well, the Hollywood idiots, the illegal aliens crossing the border, I think that's a huge topic. This country has a fundamentally porous border with Mexico. This is an issue of illegal immigration. This is an issue of terrorists coming in through that border. This is an issue that is not being addressed by either party. It's very interesting to me, an immigrant son by the way, that in Europe, immigration became the biggest issue in the last elections. And in the most liberal of nations, immigration became a huge issue. And guess what? All of the governments seem to get it that the people of Europe, whether it was in France or Germany or England, wherever it was, the people said enough is enough. We're being overrun. And even the liberal parties would discuss immigration over there. But not here. Here the liberals won't touch it, nor the conservatives. It's the topic nobody will touch, the I word. It's worse than the F word. And I think it needs to be addressed sooner rather than later. Not only because of the costs, but also because of the assaults upon our hospitals and our schools. The operational word here is not immigrant. It's illegal. I believe in immigration, controlled immigration, with citizens that a country can contain, uh, citizens that a country needs. Do we need more immigrants in a downsized economy when Americans are out of work? Should we put some of our military on the border? It's a very important question. Someone has to ask the question. 1-888-MSNBC-USA. Let's go to the callers on the Savage Nation. Leslie in Michigan, what's on your mind? Hello, yes, I'm calling about Congress. Yes. And the fact that for so many months now we've been hearing we have to go after Al-Qaeda, we can't deal with Iraq now. I hear Christopher Dodd on the Senate f floor railing about the fact that we should be dealing with North Korea now instead of Saddam Hussein. Uh, well, These Leslie, let me relate to that. That is, that is such a crock of garbage. You know, the left has been saying to George Bush, and I've heard this over and over again, there's an, a simple answer to that. Every time I see one of these phony li uh, liberals get up there and say, North Korea poses a bigger threat. Why don't you do something about it? My answer would be, so, in other words, Senator Dodd, you would be in favor of bombing North Korea first. Is that what you're saying? I mean, why don't they just call his bluff? Thanks for the call, Leslie. Let's go to Pennsylvania. Jeff, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Don't you think it's time for Americans to be Americans? Our country was founded on guts and grit. Well, I don't know about guts and grit. I know that, I, uh, that my country, if we, if we which I love... Is, is being overrun at its borders. The English language is being decimated by the multilingualists exactly. and the multiculturalists. People come into our country, and they're, they and they're, be and they're Americans. Yeah, they and what they're doing is they're taking our culture and they're decimating our culture. Or Italian Americans. They should be Americans. You're either an American or you're not. If well, you're not, I, I don't please. believe in the hyphenated part of it. I believe, though, that uh, people can certainly take pride in their heritage as most Americans do. Sure but you I can. do but know I do know the people I knew when they came over here. They wanted to be Americans, Jeff. I agree with English. you. Thank you for that call, you Tom. Uh, Jeff, rather I thank you very much. Yeah, we don't need the hyphens. We don't need the hyphens. Uh, Tom in New York, welcome to the Savage Nation. Michael, God bless you. This is Dr. Tom from New York. Dr. You're the best. Tom! How you My doing? My man, are you in the surgery right now? Where are you? No, actually, I'm, I'm, I just came home from the church from my son Sebastian's baptism to see your show. So, yeah, well, you know what I almost read today on the air, Tom, and I have a, my, my Bible on this desk. I may be the first person in the media who carried his Bible with him, and I'm not ashamed to tell you I almost read 
uh, the Psalms that I read on my radio show the other day, you know, that as I walk through the valley of the shadow kind of thing. Yeah. Because, Tom, let me tell you something. This is a try. I feel as though I'm a firewalker this morning. I know the kind of heat I'm going to get for just speaking my mind in this country where, where we're supposed to have a liberty and freedom of speech. But, Tom, what's on your mind? This is the greatest country in the world. I want to say the lack of protests of the Hollywood left during the Clinton's war against the Serbian people is, is worse than a double standard. It's, it's quadruple standard. Uh, they well, didn't... Tom, well, no, let me relate to that. When Bill Clinton, Madeleine Albright, and the others dropped bombs on Serbia with the NATO, with our warplanes repainted with NATO markings, I almost burst a blood vessel for 80 days on my radio show. Not because Milosevic is a doll, but because atrocities were being committed on both sides. But more importantly, when those bombs were falling on innocent Serbians, 2,000 of whom were killed according to a UN study, I didn't hear one peep out of the American liberals who care so much about this war, which has not yet begun. Tom, would you agree with me that it appears that a bomb that has a D on it is a good bomb, and a bomb that has an R on it is a bad bomb? You are so right. I mean, Clinton never asked for congressional approval. He never went to UN resolutions. He bombed the Serbian people who were always friends with the Americans and the Jewish people during the Second World War, and they were fighting KLA that has direct links to Al-Qaeda. Tom, we're going to do a show on this another day, but the fact is that about 600,000 to 800,000 Serbs have been killed in concentration camps in World War II. The Serbs rescued U.S. airmen in World War II. They suddenly looked up in 1998 and old men started to cry because they saw American warplanes dropping bombs on Belgrade. They said the last time they saw warplanes over Belgrade was when Hitler br drove his Stukas over Belgrade. It was a black mark in the history of America, Tom. I'd rather put it aside for now. God bless you in that hospital, Tom, and God bless your son. God bless you. Thank you very much. Now, I want to just show you something. It's not for effect. I'm not going to hold my Bible up, but I want people who've listened to my radio show when I say I put post-its in my book, I put post-its in my Bible. Here. Here are the post-its in my Bible. You think I'm making this up? I'm not a very religious man, but I want you to see that I, ra I actually practice what I preach, and I preach what I practice. And I truly believe that God's hand is involved in all of this. And I truly believe that I was put here for a reason, and that reason is you. You put me here. And so let's go to you. Lori in California, welcome to the Savage Nation. Lori, I, uh, I, is Lori there? Let's go to Jason in Wisconsin, then. Who's ever next up? Welcome to the Savage Nation. I guess we've lost our callers, or maybe God's hand moved down and cut them off. Jason in Wisconsin, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yeah, Michael, love your show. Thank you. Uh, that that means you're a very disturbed person with what's going on in America if you love me. Well, that is true. I, uh, I joined the military back during the first Gulf War, and I think what everybody fails to realize, all these kids that are protesting, that this war is going to last maybe a week, if that. These are all the same soldiers that put up a fight the first time, and it only lasted a month. They're not going to want to fight any more than anybody else wants to fight. Well, Jason, you and I will disagree on this. I don't think that this war is the uh, end of all wars. I frankly think it's the opening salvo in a war against the fascism that is threatening to sweep the earth. Well, that and I, I, I believe agree the you. president was 100% right when he spoke about an axis of evil. We have certainly seen North Korea pop up, uh, and, and they are threatening us with nuclear weapons. Would you not say they're part of the axis of evil? I think they are. No, I think we should go after them after we take well, care of Iraq. Well, I don't. I don't. I think we should ask our good friends in China who are making a bloody fortune off us in trade imbalances to go after him and tell him to stop the threats. China, it's their sphere of influence. There's not a reason for us to fire a shot. But there's a good reason for all of our senators who know the Chinese very well to say to the Chinese leadership, rein that man in now. That's what I think. 1-888-MSNBC-USA. When I come back on the Savage Nation, I may take another call or two. We're going to go back to the opening footage of the show. We'll close up, and I will then tell you what's coming up right here on the Savage Nation. As I always say, be here or be nowhere. Your choice. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. I was reading an interesting book during the break, and it said, what would happen if the Democrats win the presidency? Should uh, uh, Hillary win or one of the others? Americans can expect the following. A steep rise in taxes everywhere, many more illegal aliens in every town and city, foreign spies in our science laboratories, Islamo-fascism as protected speech, and vouchers for government-mandated diversity training. 
There will also be a seizure of our constitutional right to protect our homes with guns, more race-based race hiring, race-based scholarships, and race-based school admissions. Government supplied Ritalin for boys who show signs of the disease called masculinity. You'll also see the further rejection of God, more hate crime legislation, more pornography in your living room, all lubricated by the Democrat Party's contribution to a trickle-down immorality. This is from a great book called The Savage Nation. I hope you'll check it out. We have only 60 seconds. Kathy, 30 seconds or less. What's on your mind on The Savage Nation? Hi, this is Kathy. Yes, what's on I your mind? I love your show. Thank you. And I just wanted to say you're absolutely right about our president, but the fire is in his belly. It's been tamped down by the people who made fun of him for being a cowboy. Yeah, well, I and agree we with you. I'd rather see the cowboy, though. I I'm not too. afraid of a cowboy. America was built by cowboys, and we that's what we need cowboy. right now. We need cowboys, not men in, uh, in, in gray flannel suits. I absolutely agree. I, I'm telling you, the guy is the real McCoy, and I love him. I the do problem too. is, whenever George Bush acts like himself, we all love him. Isn't that true? That's well, that's it from the Savage true. Nation, Kathy and everybody else. Thanks for being with me. Thanks for putting me here. Next week, it'll be another story from inside the mind of Michael Savage, live right here on the Savage Nation. And I hope you'll be here, or else you'll be nowhere. Amen.